Good morning. My name is Graham Goulden, and um, I would identify myself as a leadership and violence prevention trainer. I'm a recently retired police officer, having spent the last 10 years of my policing career as a chief inspector working with the Scottish Violence Reduction Unit. And my work nowadays takes me into many, many different settings, working in schools, universities, in workplaces, corporates and, and public sector, um, also working in prisons and uh, with sports. And whilst the settings may vary and be different, my approach in all these settings is very similar in that I apply a lens of leadership to my work. When it comes to the prevention of violence and abuse in all of these settings, I feel that we need to start looking at these issues as leadership issues. And my own view um, is that when we see acts of physical violence at the extreme end of the, of, of the continuum, then, you know, these acts don't just happen. Um, they have to start somewhere and it often starts with the words that we use. And as a former investigator, I would constantly interview people who had witnessed a friend um, being assaulted, a friend being killed, or a friend who was being violent, actually the, the friend who was the aggressor. And I would be, be more often than not be met with the, uh, the words, I could tell something was about, about to happen. I knew this wasn't going to end well. And in the past few years, I've worked with a lot of long-term prisoners who have been convicted of serious crimes like murder. Even these men have said to me, that their friends could have stopped them from doing what they did. And I'm convinced that if we can develop better leadership around violence, we can see further reductions, real reductions, a real diminution in levels of abuse and violence in our, in our, in our society. And for this um, piece, I want to focus on this issue of male leadership. Why? Well, as I said in a previous piece, that when it comes to violence, men are front and center. Yes, women are violent, but men's violence is a real issue that needs to be gripped, it needs to be taken control of. And to, to be clear when I'm talking about men's violence, I'm including men being violent towards other men, men being violent towards women, and men being violent towards themselves. And for me, the, all these forms of violence are all connected. Far too many men simply say, I don't do that, I don't use violence, so it's got nothing to do with me. And for me, that's very short-sighted and one that's fraught with a lot of risk. As a man, the prevention of men's violence has got everything to do with me. If I don't step up and show better leadership, nothing, nothing will change. If I and other men do step up, I feel that as men we will um, be more, we will lead more authentic lives. Our relationships with our male friends, our intimate partners will be better. Our own mental health will also benefit. And death by suicide remain a big issue for men. I lost my dad to suicide, as I've said previously. I need to show better leadership. And my, my ask of other men is to... Look at how you can develop your leadership around all of the issues that I've just talked about. You know, a few a few weeks back, I was challenged on my use of, the, of this leadership lens. I was accused of um, reinforcing the male stereotype of being the leader and being dominant. And I responded in a blog, but I wanted to clarify my approach and why I feel it needs to be an integral part of any violence reduction strategy, whether that's in a small town, city, or across the UK as a whole. Mm -hmm. So let's, you know, for me, I think the starting point is let's explore what makes a good leader. For me, a good leader is a person who's able to communicate the values and makes decisions based on these values and based on the set of healthy core values. A good leader is prepared to learn, to do the knowledge. A good leader is an ally. A good leader is able to show compassion and able to validate the experience of another. A good leader provides hope. A good leader has vision is consistent, a role model. And lastly, a good leader is prepared to show moral courage. When it comes to the prevention of violence, I'm hoping that you're starting to make the links between all these traits I've talked about and how we can start to, to make this impact on violence prevention in our society. Now, rather than simply fighting back, saying something like, but men are victims or women can be violent, a good leader is prepared to see the point of view. A good leader is prepared to do the knowledge, to learn about the statistics, to learn about the extent of male violence that we have in our society. By the way, I accept that, women, that men are victims of violence and women are perpetrators as well. It's, that's, that's fact and I, I can never ignore that. And I think I'd be doing a disservice if I ignored that type of, type of violence. But um, today we're gonna to talk about men's violence. Now, a good leader is an ally. Victims of violence need to know that they will be supported. You know, just think about it, if you were having a bad day, how would it make you feel if someone came up to you and started to talk about what was going on, showed that they cared and said something like, you know, that's not your fault. That's leadership in action. And it's just these little things that can come together to make a big difference in our, in our world. But 
so that, that can really help a victim at a time of crisis. Consistency in behaviour and understanding for me is important also. As I say, this consistency tells victims that you care and importantly communicates to the some men that their behaviour won't be accepted. And for men in particular, this is important. If we see men step up and set the tone for their masculinity, we will see real big steps in reductions of violence. Also, our sons will start to get clarity on masculinity. Just now, masculinity is being defined by the few. My view is we need leadership from the majority. The last trait, moral courage, for me underpins everything in my approach. It just underpins everything I do. For boys and men, stepping up to speak to a friend about their abusive behaviour will not be easy. You're, you're not going to get the high five back when you go up there and say something about your friend's behaviour that was wrong or harmful. You know, it's that, that, that hand's going to be left hanging there. You need to start thinking about it because that's going to that's be really difficult. That takes courage. And whilst many men don't fear friends using physical violence against them if they decide to challenge that, that person's behaviour, Men still fear being socially isolated from that peer group. And that fear, as I say, that fear moves from the physical fear of being physically attacked to this social fear. This fear that if I say something to my friend, I will become the subject of ridicule. And we need to help men overcome that social fear to give them the skills and the confidence to, to step up. Because I say that's where we'll see a real diminution in levels of violence. If we have men with the ability, with the narrative to to take that stand to show the courage to, to actually step up and do something. So I stand by my view that we need better leadership from boys and men. We have the real potential, as I said many times, to see this real reduction in levels of violence where boys and men feel able to challenge, not simply strangers, people they don't know, but feel, feel able to challenge and speak to people within their mm -hmm. peer group, within their sports teams, within their work groups within their, their peer network with their friends with their family even that's where we'll start to see the real reductions in levels of violence and stepping up is very much like stepping into the spotlight when you step up you step into a bright light the focus then turns on you and i think for many many men that's why they decide to step back and, and say nothing and i think we need to be clear that what does a stepping down communicate what does a stepping back out of the spotlight communicate to people the silence that results gives power to the perpetrators, to some men that are defining it for the majority. It tells them what they're doing is okay. And the silence, in my view, also communicates to victims that we don't care about them, that they have done something wrong. They are to blame for what happened to them. And silence, in my view, in my work, in many ways, is a form of violence. And we need to own our silence. If that's what we decide to do, we need to own that silence. So what can we do to help boys and men be better, more effective leaders? I feel we need to start from the stance that the majority of men are indeed good guys. And I firmly believe that, who hold a good set of core values. They know right from wrong and so desperately want to be the best friend, the best colleague they can be. In all my places of work, I meet men who just want to be the best pal, the best friend, the best colleague, the best teammate that they can be. And they often say to me, they feel they can't. And I ask them why? Because it's not the norm. And we need to help overcome that. So it becomes the norm that men feel able to challenge and say something to other people. We need to find a way to meet men where they are at. Uh, you know, I'll say that again. We need to find ways to meet men where they are at. And what I mean here is we need to connect with men before we decide to correct them if that correction is necessary. We need to help men see the benefits of their leadership. We need to go to places where these men are in their level of understanding. That's where we need to meet them. And from there, start to have more productive conversations around the issues that we as men are facing. We need to really help men understand what they're going to get from this leadership. I found meeting men where they're at a really, really useful way to engage men. Many, many men are feeling indicted at this precise moment. The fingers pointed at them, and rightly so in some occasions. And we have many men and many male commentators, these grandstanders, shouting out against the likes of Me Too, saying men should fear false accusations. And in my view, the only men that need to fear Me Too are the ones making the claims, are the ones that are the abusive ones. The mass, vast majority of guys should not have nothing to fear from the likes of Me Too. Uh, that's there for a purpose and I fully support the movement of, 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 of women across the world 
who are taking the stance against the harassment and abuse that's been taking place in their lives. And um, I think male leadership has been missing from that from that discussion. When I work with, with boys and men, I'm honest. Um, I talk about the Graham before getting into this work. I talk about my, my mistakes. I talk about my behavior, my silence. But I also talk about the impact of violence on my daughters, losing my dad to suicide, and my past frustrations at not being able to be me, not, not being able to be the authentic person that I really crave to be um, in, my, in, my, in my life as a, as a young man, as a young police officer. And now feeling able to say how I feel on the subject, to communicate what, how I feel about incidents that are taking place in, in society. That's me, you're, you're seeing the real me. And I think, I think it's quite a refreshing um, um, place to be. In, in your life where you can you feel comfortable and confident in your own skin to, 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 to be yourself. So a form of honesty from anybody working with boys and men is very, very important. And when I create the space for these types of conversations, you really start to build a team. You really start to see a flow, a flow in a direction that everyone wants to follow. Um, you, know, you know, the healthy viewpoints come out, the healthy core values of men are shared. The frustrations are shared and the frustrations are overcome. And when you create a space for men, you allow men to enter that spotlight knowing that they will not be alone and that other men will respect them for entering into that spotlight. I think also we need to give men the narrative to help other men. And to help, I mean both to victims and indeed friends who may be perpetrating abusive behaviour. I try not to use the phrase calling people out. I prefer to call people in. And what I mean here is to call out often sometimes results in conflict and no one likes conflict. When we call a person in, we say that we care about them. We identify the problem and highlight that we don't agree with that type of behavior, um, but we also show, show a concern. We don't, I, I, you know, I, I don't want my friend to lose their job or to be kicked off the team or to be kicked out of school, but I want that behavior to stop. That behavior is wrong. And I think it's important that we help men be the friends that, that, that they actually want to be. So rather than calling people out, how can we help men call people in, call their friends in um, to be the friends, the, the authentic friends that they actually want to be? I see too many organizations simply tell men we need to do better. And maybe they're right, um, but I feel that that approach, that demand approach is not working and is often why so many men are finding solace in the men who are claiming to be their saviors, these so-called um, messiahs for men. We see them all over the world so this, this, suggesting that they're standing up for men's rights. And by the, by the way, those they, they often say those who suggest they're going to keep people safe are, are the ones that end up doing the exact opposite. So um, again, some, some, some form of honesty from um, between men is so, so important. There's a need for better male leadership, but there's also a need um, for us to start thinking how we can support boys and men to be the leaders that we want them to be, we need them to be. Better male leadership, as I've said, will create a more authentic culture for men to live, work and love in. Better leadership from boys and men will suggest that abuse is a transgression against rather than an enactment of the social norms of, ma of masculinity. Just now, we live in a world where to be a man is about being violent, being intimidating, being aggressive. We need to flip that, where showing care, showing compassion is the norm. And this abuse, this violence, this dominance is a transgression against masculinity. If we have men stepping up in, in this idea of, of their leadership, then we can help communicate that to, to boys and men around, around the world. I, I believe better leadership from boys and men will ultimately save lives. Uh, as I've said, suicide rates amongst men, young men, older men, remain at worryingly high levels. Uh, and I feel this this grasping, this gripping of the problem by us guys will help save, life, save lives in the future. And at a time when our boys are struggling in their relationships, we need visible leadership from men. You know, I've talked about a number of traits um, that need to be visible in a leader. And, and the last one for me is leaders should have the ability to create new leaders. Leaders create leaders. And I think a call out to men, a call to action for, for, from this piece here is that we need men to step up, to be the leaders, to help create the leaders supporting the next generation of young boys and young men. So thanks for, thanks for your time, thanks for listening, and um, guys, let's go out there and do some work.